Now we're looking at the cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane conformation. We're going to do this the same way we did the other one. Set a reference point, carbon 1. I like to consistently number clockwise. Now draw both chair conformations. Find your reference point. Again, I think consistency is key. So if you always make carbon 1 this carbon, then you're consistently going to be correct. It doesn't have to be that carbon, just be consistent. So here is carbon 1 and number clockwise. One thing you might notice is in a lot of the other examples, I started with this as my first chair and then flipped it to this one. It doesn't matter which one you start with because you're just looking at both conformations. So the methyl on carbon 1 is out. The methyl on carbon 2 is out. So now when we put this on the chair, both of these will go from out groups. You want to draw them as up groups on the chair. So in carbon 1, your up group is going to be the equatorial group. The axial would be your down group. I'm not going to draw that one in. On carbon 2, the up group is the axial, the down is the equatorial. Again, I'm going to leave that one off. So now let's put our methyl on carbon 1, our other methyl on carbon 2. Again, out, they're both up. They started out as cis on the same side and they're both pointed upward, so they're still cis. Now, after the ring flip, the methyl and carbon 1 goes from equatorial to axial. The methyl group on carbon 2 goes from axial to equatorial. They're both still up. They're both cis. Now, if you try to compare these two conformations, we have an axial methyl, an equatorial methyl. We have an axial methyl, an equatorial methyl. These two are equal in energy. So one is not more stable than the other.